Okay, so hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about Eubulpharis macularis, the leopard gecko. Um, one of the most commonly kept pet lizards or geckos um, in the U.S. or around the world is actually believed to be um, the first domesticated lizard species. Um, but anyways, this is a, a crepuscular, that's the word crepuscular type of lizard where it's only active um, right after dawn and um, no right before dawn and after dusk and this is what the most normal gecko would look like out in the wild this is what a wild caught form would look like except it wouldn't have the stripe blowing down its back um, she carries recessive genes though for albinism and uh, patternless and such but anyways, they're also um, can be seen at night, so they can kind of be considered nocturnal. Um, they're insectivores, um, meaning they only eat insects, but I have actually been able to successfully get them to eat a uh, pinky mouse before. Um, not the healthiest things for them, though, so not too uh, frequently that I do that. Um, if you see in my cages, my breeding cages, this is the male, the female is down there. If you see, their, their setups are really simple. They're just a small 15-quart tub, a little water bowl, and a food bowl. And they actually like being minimalists. Um, you know, they don't like all the fancy decorations that people buy at the pet store. That's honestly just a way to make the cage look nice, and you're just wasting your money. Um, especially if you're breeding, uh, you can't afford to do that. And um, a 15-quart tub is actually more than enough space because the geckos in the wild, um, they require small caves to go live in. And by giving them too large of a cage, they actually feel insecure. And yeah, but anyways, this is my male. Um, if you look at the tails, they're kind of unique too. Um, his isn't so much fat right now, but someone else like the female in here, you'll see she has a little chubby tail. And just like how camels store water and fat into their, their lumps, these guys store water and fat into their tails. And just like a defense mechanism, if you grab onto them, they will let go of them and run away. The reason why these guys are named Eubulpharis macularis is if you look at the leopard gecko, um, it has spots, um, you know, depending on their variation, they may have reduced or whatnot, um, especially the nicer ones, the higher end ones. But... Um, they actually do have eyelids, unlike most geckos, and I want to get her to blink, but yeah, there you go. But they actually have movable eyelids, and if you also look, they are not like other geckos because they cannot climb up the walls. They are strictly terrestrial. Um, but anyways, Eubulpharis is a combination of the Greek words eu, which is for good, and... Um, it's blefair, I believe, which is for eyelid. And macular is de uh, derived from a Latin word meaning spot or blemish, leopard. But anyways, yeah, um, they have five subspecies. They strictly eat insects, but sometimes eat uh, mice and little small rodents. I've gotten them to feed uh, on pinky mice, like I said. And... What's really interesting about them is they are sexually dimorphic, meaning if you pick her up and look under her tail, you can tell whether or not she is a male or female. So it's very easy to sex them. And also, their babies are actually temperature-dependent sex-determinated. And that's meaning if I go put her eggs up here in my little incubator in for 80 degrees, in about two months they will hatch up females. If I put them in for one month at 90 degrees... They will hatch in one month, um, and they will all be males. So it's kind of interesting what you could do with that. Um, what I usually do is I put them in for 80 degrees the first two weeks of their, their lifespan in the incubator, and then I charge it up to 90 because they can actually get the same hatch rate at only one month but come out mostly females. Cages are actually pretty optimum size for them. Um, like I said, they so they come from little caves down in the deserts of Asia throughout Pakistan and some parts of northern India actually. Um, just in small little holes and 
tunnels. This is an albino form. I already showed her off a little bit, but yeah, she's pretty nice looking. Um, there's a lot of genetics that goes with these guys. Um, there's different eye genetics that plays in a role. There's three different strains of albinos. Uh, so this is a snake-eyed raptor. So half of his eye is red, half of his eye is albino. And that's what a normal eye looks like. So you can tell that it's albino on the right, red on the left. And on the other side, he just has a straight up albino eye. So, and he is a snake-eyed raptor, snow raptor. And the snow basically just kind of lightens up their color a little bit, kind of dulls it out. And right here, this is an emerine. And I'm just hoping to produce some oranger looking versions of him. They're not going to be full albino since he is albino and she's not and it's recessive gene. But this girl, like I said, is recessive for albino. So breeding him to her, I can get snow albinos, not to mention super snow albinos because snow is a co-dominant gene, meaning if you breed it to itself, you'll get a super version of itself. Dominant a lot can go with dominant if it just depends on luck honestly but usually you'll get it right away in the next offspring and then recessive you usually will not produce any more recessive unless it's recessive to recessive or it's recessive to het recessive and you get lucky so these guys cage setups are really simple um in the back inside the actual rack which i don't have a light to show you guys there's a heat tape lined up so they can thermally regulate themselves they can go to the back and be about 90 or they can come to the front and be anywhere from 70 to 80 you know look at the tail difference that's because the male he's using a lot of calories on the female put it that way and um she is just eating everything just to uh give nutrients to her eggs and to get bigger. Um, but anyways, like I was saying, they... I forget what I was saying, but um, their cages are really simple. Um, there's a food dish, there's a water dish, and it gets turned over a lot. Um, and then there's a hide. And what's in the hide is cocoa fiber. This is for the geckos to actually go in and lay their eggs. And it's also good for geckos that need help shedding because sometimes it'll be too dry for them to shed and sometimes they'll be shed stuck on their their fingers and it's just not nice um but yeah they like simplicity um you know in the wild and the deserts of asia through pakistan some parts of north india where they come from they hide in little burrows um to hide away from other animals and then right before dawn and after dusk they will come out to go get food when all the predators are away so these are my nicest geckos in my collection and um, I put a lot of money into these two specifically um, this is an enigma she actually has red eyes and is not an albino or anything and right here this is a this is a white and yellow um, and as you can see the stripe on their sides are a lot higher than on the other leopard geckos and this is actually one of the more expensive morphs just because it's newer and it's really unique looking she's got greens and oranges really intense colors as you can see here there's a bit of a mess um, this is what a female who is gravid and about to lay this is what she looks like um, she's actually digging at the moment can't really get a good video of that keep in mind this is on an iPhone 4 so but anyways yeah she made a total mess female snow reverse stripe uh, het for raptor which I believe has laid because she has laid kind of like a pyramid side right here as you can see it kind of moves off so usually that means that she buried her eggs somewhere over here so I'm just gonna softly Pull the soil back, and then hopefully there will be not one, but two soft little eggs in there somewhere. And I'm not saying anything. Um, sometimes it's actually the other way around, and they do it on the other side. Um, sometimes they just bury different from, than other geckos, so we'll see. 
If there's nothing, then she probably didn't lay anything. And there is two eggs right there. So see, don't give up. And these eggs are definitely better than the last clutch she laid me. So, yeah, right there. And these can be possible super raptors, which are an all-white gecko with red eyes. So, very interesting. Nice. We have the eggs. We need to incubate them because if we leave them inside there with the female, um, she's not going to have very much space to lay the other nine possible clutches. And um, it, you just want to ensure their, their survival and make sure that, that they hatch. And, you know, you don't want the female to eat them when they hatch. So what I do is this is the, the traditional method. I usually... I've upgraded to um, using trays to prevent mold more, but this this is, has a pretty high rate also. Um, basically, we're gonna make a spot for the eggs. And then, all you gotta do is you gotta get the egg. Uh, a lot of people draw on them. I usually just set them in the way that they are, and the reason why they draw on them is to make sure that they stay in the position that they were laid, because the, uh, the actual gecko is in there and it attaches itself to the egg so if you flip it upside down you can actually drown the gecko in its own yolk and it's like killing a baby so so here we have two eggs and it doesn't really matter if you leave some of the dirt on it's uh, actually just coco coir uh, ground up cocoa husk basically and it's almost just like dirt a lot of people use it for planting and stuff but so there's two good leopard gecko eggs and this is perlite and the reason why you use this is because they actually need humidity otherwise they won't hatch um, I don't really pay attention to the actual humidity I don't put a gauge in or anything instead uh, I just make sure that it's not to the point of where there's water at the sides but you make sure that it's pretty crisp and you won't find water if you dig your finger down there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for incubating. Gecko's actually make very good and hardy pets. Um, they're one of the animals that you can hold and you can actually hand feed them. This is one of the smaller little babies that I have. She's from September, I believe. She was born in September. Kind of bit me, but it didn't hurt, so. But as you can see, they have no problem just eating right out of your hands. So this is basically what leopard geckos eat. Um, right here I have some Dubai roaches, and then right here I have some mealworms. And then usually to my bigger geckos I give them these big super worms. But anyways, just for this female because she loves roaches, I might give her one right in front of you guys. This gecko specifically, poor girl, has neurological issues, but she'll still eat. 